Another year, we are ranked the number one team in baseball. But for five straight years, we have yet to win a World Series. So we got to make up for, I guess, the experts or really what our own expectations are. Let's be real. First in contact, second in power, ninth in pitching, 27th in defense, and right in the middle of the pack for speed. Let's take a look at the roster. We are going with six starters, but one of them is going to be in the bullpen. Again, we lost Manoa. Aliseo, Pearson, Inoa, and Bolin are the starters alongside Berrios, and Klopstein will be in the bullpen as a long reliever alongside Reyes, Carmona, Watson, Murray, and Doug Morrow, who we drafted like five or six years ago, and I just figured it's time to call him up. Other relievers are David Ferreira and rookie Xavier Taylor, a potential he might blow everybody out of the water which is great because i mean hey romano did it for a bit but it's time for some new blood at catcher gabo moreno and antonio gomez uh, vlad still holding down first jonathan aranda right behind him if regression keeps happening the way it does i've already stated he, vlad might get replaced but he's got very good numbers at least against righties and can kind of hold his own against lefties second nick madrigal no one else will be backing up behind him immediately Rafael Devers holding it down at third. Do not be surprised if Ted Ray gets called up. Look at that bat 90 contact against lefties. If somebody gets injured, believe me, he's getting the first call up. Next, Bo Bichette. Doing Bo Bichette things like he's been doing the entire time he's been here and then some. Mariano Murillo up to an 88 overall. Lourdes Escurillo Jr. actually returned. He signed like get in a February I just didn't notice it also we've got Cato Marte coming back I actually signed Sam Hilliard or I gave offered a contract to Sam Hilliard because well maybe we need a bench bat I don't know what's I don't know you never know what could happen with a guy with 90 power from both sides of the field and Garrett Mitchell will be behind him um, I kind of signed Hilliard with the thought that if Gurriel leaves we've got somebody else behind him and Alejandro Castilla comes back for what is like year six, actually. Um, I mean, he's been very solid the entire time he's been here. Uh, let's get to the draft. Any major injuries? I already know how to do this. Right. By potential, this is the best draft we've had in a really long while. Everybody at least over 70 at potential. Overalls, not so much. Steven Ward was the first pick. As you can see, very fast. Good fielder. He's got some power, just needs to get his contact and vision together. 19 years old from the state of Washington. Next, Craig Gray, a five pitch pitcher, right hander from Texas. Four seam changeup, curveball, splitter, slider. Looks pretty solid. Do got to build up some of the pitches again. I looked at some of the guys we had, and they're all like late 20s and probably not going to get a hell of a whole lot better. Next up was Doug Harris. We needed a catcher. I haven't drafted a catcher in like ages, if at all, in this series. He's 18 years old. It's going to be a long time before anybody ever sees him. Herman Nobles, Pennsylvania right-hander, four-seam, slider, cutter, splitter. I like all them pitches, and I hope he becomes a beast. Next up was Carlos Veras from Puerto Rico. Got some righty power. Got a little bit of lefty power, kind of average. Very durable, good fielder, spectacular speed. I want him to become something. And honestly, that kind of depends on... How long I actually continue this series? Um, there's just, listen, there's the elephant in the room. Black Guerrero is down to a 79 overall. Thing is, he's playing pretty well. Tom Hayes was the last pick. Lefty from Louisiana. Throws two fastball slider and a changeup. Again, Black Guerrero is not bad by any means. I don't understand why is he tanking in attributes. This doesn't make sense. Batting 291, playing like every day, six home runs, 21 RBIs through two months. And that's not the best, but come on. Come on, STS. Beginning of July, and I've got a trade. Omar Castro, the guy on my left, your left, right? On this side, um, he's a catcher. He is being dangled out there by the Rockies, and the Rockies want a third baseman, and we've got a couple, and I chose to give them Miguel Geraldo. Jose Miranda I picked up off of waivers after Alejandro Castro got, sorry, Alejandro Castilla got hurt in mid-May. 
just to fill in a roster spot. But Miguel Geraldo will be going over to the Rockies and we'll get ourselves a young enough catcher. Not that Moreno is getting old. He's only 28. I just want another catcher. Just want another catcher, another young catcher we can maybe build up. We'll see how things play out. With Jose Miranda breaking his shin, gonna be out for two months. We're gonna call up our very first draft pick, that being Mr. Ted Ray. We cannot deny him any longer. I don't give a damn what his potential is. I don't care what his overall is. That bat plays. Hopefully we see it in the postseason. We make the postseason. It was kind of a given at this point. We began another year in which we lead the division by at least 10 games. Most of the damn year, we're really running unopposed at this point. It's almost, it's almost sad. I, I kind of wish, I wish yeah, I would actually, you know, challenge me a little bit. But, I mean, they are beating our teams in the postseason. Let's look at the league leaders and the award winners. Oscar, uh, you know what, he's the league in whip. And Bo Bichette leading the league in hits. As far as awards are concerned, John Ben Bolin wins a gold club. That's a pitcher. Why do we? Okay, cool. Good for you, bro. Eh, not much in the way of awards. Before we begin this postseason run, Vlad Guerrero is officially not the best first baseman on our team. Yeah, I've probably beaten this, beaten this dead horse a thousand times, but you already know where I'm going with this. All right, how's our first round matchup going to play out against the Tigers? We need to get some revenge on him. Game one, throw him out six nothing. Game two, we lose eight one. Game three, ooh, critical situation. Curtis Watson we try to keep Riley Green off the base paths as long as and two other Tigers as well. Let's get into it. We can't win a world championship until we avenge a loss to Detroit. Riley Green is going to lead. No, sorry, he's not going to lead off. He'll be the second batter in the inning. Curtis Watson can't seem to get the fastball over. It is a tie ball game at 4 3 0 count. Watson, I want to say he's running into a little bit of trouble, but he's been very good this year. 3 1. Pitch going to be ripped to first. Kicks off of Guerrero's glove, and he's going to run to the bag. The 2028 Gold Glove first baseman makes the play. Brendan Rodgers. 0-1 pitch is going to be hit up into the infield. Vlad is going to practically step on the pitching mound in order to make the catch. And we are going to go to some extra innings. Inside extra innings, Sam Hilliard, the one-year mercenary, is going to get his opportunity. He's one for three today. Drew Carlton. His ball is going to get hit down the third baseline. And because the shift hasn't been outlawed yet, he is going to easily end up at second with a stand-up double with one away. Nick Madrigal, chopper up the middle, kicks off of Carlton's glove. No, off of his ankle. He's able to recover and make the play. You'd think he won the gold glove for pitchers this year, but he's a reliever, and honestly, relievers do not get gold gloves. At least I haven't seen them win any. They usually aren't out there long enough. Flag rail with a single, and he's going to hit it over the second baseman's head. It's going to roll into right field. Toronto is going to take the lead 5-4. Can we tack on some more so we can get to our closer? But Cattell is 0-4. for 4. A slider is hung up there. And the right fielder is going to stare at it all the way gone. A two-run shot and a three-run inning. His first long ball of the postseason of this postseason. And Toronto is up seven to four. All right, we go to Xavier Taylor, who in this past season ended up with the second most saves for any rookie in Major League Baseball history, a under three ERA and a 1.23 whip. And honestly, I'm gonna say I think he take care he takes care of business with such a cushion. The first batter, Christian Arojo, is going to strike out on a high fastball, as you see by the by the replay. In the next battle, will be Nomar Mazzara. He's 4 of 11. He's got two RBIs. He's got a hit today. Can he help his team out? Chopper up the middle. Change up. Hit the magical to his right-hand side. Fires over the first with some gusto. That is the second out. Here's former Cardinal Paul DeYoung. Or Paul DeJong. Is that Paul DeYoung? Yeah, it is. And he is going to strike out. Doesn't matter what the hell his name is. Because he is a victim of the strikeout. And now Toronto is finishes game off. 
seven to four and they move just a little bit closer to their world series aspirations that they have now taken a 2-1 lead here in the alda we uh, think we win the triple a championship i don't care are we advancing to the alcs we are we will be taking on either the mariners or the twins turns out it is the mariners who will be taking on and apparently jose miranda is no longer injured and can come off the injured list don't know if we'll even play him probably not going to add him I prefer Ted Ray being there. He's got that contact. If we just need a hit, I'll take it. Game one against Seattle. Ooh. Down one. We got, actually, I don't really remember who the lineup is anymore. I've kind of shuffled it around a bit. Let's just look and see. Label it DBC. Those are the gentlemen you will see batting in this inning. Devers, Bichette, and Castilla. Devers down 0-2 facing Zach Littell. And, oh, he is going to swing and miss just over the top of the split finger fastball. Littell definitely known for that splitter. Machette suffers a similar fate, striking on an inside four-seamer for the second out. And now we call on Alejandro Castilla. One for three. Oh, he's going to be a strikeout victim as well. Littell doing big things to set up Seattle for a lead in this series. Speaking of big things, Jerry Kalenic driving in two with two long balls, equaling Toronto's offensive output. Unfortunately, we lose game one. I got to say, I, I don't understand how so many guys can look at pitches right down the middle and not swing at them. Like, that is just... Y'all can't be professionals with that. Anyways, game two. We win seven to five. Game three, we lose. We get spanked. Matter of fact, you can barely see it above my cranium. 15 to 4. Oh boy. We at least take game four. We have an opportunity to do so. Alright. Again down one. This time we're at home and we can walk it off. Let's go. We need two runs if we want to tie up this series. Take it to a game number five here in Toronto. Down by one. Two oh count. So Devers can really sit and wait on his pitch. Three two. Liner down the left field line, and because of the shift, this one's going to carry him up against the wall. He is going to be safe at second with a lead off double to start off the ninth inning. Bo Bichette right behind him, 2-2. Two -two. Ooh, he's going to stare at it high inside, four-seamer, and be the first out victim. Alejandro Castilla hits it, slider right up the middle in the center field. Devers is going to come around third, and does not even need the slide. The ball game is tied at three apiece garrett mitchell is going to come in to pinch run for castilla i would have preferred castilla stay in it's not that bad in fielding and really not that slow i see a campbell in the bullpen mariano marillo ground ball the second albies throws it oh and it is offline shortstop can't seem to get his foot down almost throws it in the left field that is an error on albies as we take a look at that trying to run down the other second baseman can't get him as he looked like he kind of got his foot oh caught in the dirt ground ball up the middle in the center field runner coming around from second and we're gonna walk this game off and win it here in the late going four to two take a look at that again whizzes right past Littell's head Whew, nearly decapitated him I mean hey that's self-defense at that point series tied at two going to game five we're going to simulate game six. Will we make it to the World Series? We do. We'll be taking on St. Louis very, very shortly. Been here since about day one. That name should look very familiar to you. Actually, another guy on this team will look familiar to you. Zach Gallant of the Desert Venom Arizona Diamondback Series. He was our ace for he was basically our ace the entire time. I don't think I even bothered to trade him either. Um, but, you know, they've got a very solid, very good, really... Uh, pitching rotation. See, ro eh, relievers, not bad. Older, but still not bad at all. Closer, pretty good looking guy there. Damn, we're going to have a problem. Uh, good catcher. First base, they got Big Meat Pete and Jared Walsh backing up behind them, though neither one of them are hitting. Ben Bruno, must be a generated guy. They drafted. He is 24 years old. Good, very good lefty contact and vision. Matt Chapman, <laughs> you want a ring? All right, so I wanted more. And I know we ain't signed you back. And you know you've had some, you've had some pretty 
many good years here. They've really kind of mirrored what you did here in Toronto. Uh, you know, most of it. Maybe not this most recent year, but I know you're looking for a world championship, but I got to get it first. Uh, let me see. Shortstop, Anderson Theta. Yeah, a lot of these guys look a lot of homegrown. I know Mason Wynn is pretty solid. Actually, he's pretty good, really. Damn. Left field, Anthony Alford. Why are you guys giving Anthony Alford a chance? I, I like that. I like that. I, I don't know why. Uh, who was it? Pittsburgh never really. Eh, they gave him a little bit of a shot, but come on, they could have. They could have worked with this, right? You can't see it behind, man. It's 17 home runs and 59 RBIs with a 256 average. Like, I mean, eh, hey, home. Center field. Oh, you will also recognize this guy if you've been here long enough. How Lewis, who the real life Diamondbacks traded for just this past offseason. I did it like six months beforehand in 2022 in MLB to show 21. And he was definitely a catalyst for the team. Granted, we didn't no, we didn't make the postseason for like eight or nine years, but that's neither here nor there. That actually is in on the, it's still on the channel. I'm not having gotten rid of it, I haven't hidden it or private it or anything like that. It's still live if you want to watch it. Some of the videos are cringe, but you know, vibes in the YouTube game. DJ Stewart is their right fielder. Let's see how this World Series plays out. Let me fix the roster first. I feel like something's gonna be wonky. Alejandro Castilla is the ALCS MVP. I personally would have given it to Bo Bichette because he had more runs driven in. I don't make the rules. SDS barely, listen, they don't get any of these right. You'll never, ever, ever, ever see a pitcher win postseason or World Series MVP. I promise you that. You can sim 2,000 years. You'll never get that. Game one. I believe we are in St. Louis. Ooh, we got a one-run lead to protect. Our closer is out there. Hopefully you can shut things down there are two away quite frankly the career revival of anthony alfred may pay off if he can come through here in game number shit i forgot what number it is anyway xavier taylor on the mound looking to close out this ball game runners at first and second but he does have two away alfred three two pitch line sorry ground ball in the right field the throw to the plate is not going to be in time, and unfortunately, this ball game is tied at five. The save has been blown. So we're going to call on a new reliever, Doug Mora, who honestly, this might be a bad thing. Lefties are hitting 417 against him. He faces righty. Herrera. Ground ball to short, but Shet not going the second, going to first, and he's going to easily get him out to end the top of the ninth, here in the bottom of the ninth. Doval. He's going to 100 mile an hour fastball and end up in the glove of the center fielder for like Guerrero. Ooh, swing and miss and geez. I got to say that delivery is disgusting. Sidearm kind of the slider coming in. It looks like that ball starts at your backside and ends up like 10 feet in front of you. Ridiculous, ridiculous strikeout potential from Doval. Just from his delivery alone, Devers is on deck, but Mitchell is going to have to take a ball. 3-1 pitch, slider, going to get hit the left field, Alfred running it down, he's going to make the catch before he ends up stopping his momentum up against the wall. Here in the top of the 10th, Ben Bruno leading it off, 0-1, ground ball up the middle, right past Doug Moore into center field, Garrett Mitchell going to recover it, and St. Louis starts off with a leadoff base runner. DJ Stewart stares at a fastball low and inside. I don't know what he was looking for. Maybe he didn't want to beat into the double play. He is the first out of the inning. Kyle Lewis, curveball. No, runner going to second. The throw, uh-uh. Just hell. Magical had to really prevent and block that, almost like a catcher. 3-2 pitch to Lewis. Yeah, and it's a fastball hit deep to center field. And Mitchell is going to make the catch. Runner will not tag up. There are two away, so if St. Louis wants to score, they may have to hit one into the gap. Doug Moore, I gotta say, you got lucky on that one. Kyle Lewis has got immense power. And so does Polar Bear Pete. Pete Alonzo is gonna strike out inside fastball. And that'll get us through the 10th inning. Here in the top of the 11th, Jared Walsh, former MVP of 2027, hits a curveball down the left field line. It's gonna carry him 
as Mario has to run a long way, but fortunately is fast enough to get over there, and we will not end up with a lead-off triple. Jordan Walker, one for four. Oh, slider is hung up there, but it is going to find glove love. Mitchell fires it into third base, and ooh, whoa, it is way off the line. Almost threw that one away. So now Moore has got to deal with a runner at third. He could walk Davidson. And Davidson looks to drop down a bunt. And what the hell? Why are you? This is not the 1940s. Y'all shouldn't be attempting to steal home all that often. I get the bunt was there, but you deserve to strike out and to be tagged out for not running back, you idiot. Nonetheless, Mitchell here in the bottom of the 12 3 2. He's going to hit the cutter to the right field. It is going to carry him off the wall. Damn, I thought that was going to get out. We could have walked it off. Uh, now we got to get a hit in order to get us a run. You zoom in on that, and bam, it carries right between the B and that base in the MLB Central sign. Devers chases a slider. He really shouldn't have swung it. And as you can see, he walks back. He looks very disappointed. And understandably so. Pete Alonzo going to walk with two outs. Which leaves Jared Walsh with an opportunity to drive him in. Ball going to hit the right field. And it, yeah, Hilliard is not going to have to move. So we push on to the bottom of the 13th. Bichette coming to the plate. Two doubles. Two ribbies to his name. Love a walk off from the big bat of Bo Bichette. One, two. Whoa! Oh, come on, Alvarado. Get it together, man. Listen, I know you got good stuff for bro. You got to really. That's kind of the problem with throwing hard. Sometimes you're going to end up in that situation. Castilla versus Alvarado. He is. Oh, he's going to drop down a bunt. It's going to go to the second base side. No throw to the lead, man. Throw to first. Castilla has sacrificed himself to get us a run in scoring position. Mario. Liner. Oh, in it. Oh, man. He didn't get. That wasn't a bad ball he hit. He just pulled it too damn hard. It just never really went anywhere. Gabriel Moreno is going to avoid swinging at that curveball. Okay. Lefties. He's not hitting against them at all. Righties. He hits 303. Ground ball past the first baseman, Walsh, and rolling all the way to the corner. We are going to score from second. And we're going to walk this game off 6-5 to take a commanding 2-0 lead here in the World Series. But we've been here before, and we've been burnt. Ooh, okay. It took a long time to get through game number one, but we got the victory. All right, game two. Oh, man. We got another doozy. Hey, let's take this 2-0 lead. This has been very much a back and forth matchup. Both teams scoring one run in the sixth, both teams scoring one run in the ninth. But we are batting in the bottom. And Dever is the ball. Kicks off of Doval, and he is going to be thrown out. And that'll end the bottom of the ninth. So this game will go to extras yet again in this series. Pete Alonso going to work the walk. Alex Reyes losing a, a lot of that control. When he does throw a pitch that's in the zone, it's very hard to hit. When he doesn't, you make things much easier. Jared Walsh at the dish. Walker at Neon Deck Circle. Swing and miss. Jared Walsh. Ugh. Disgusting stuff from Alex Reyes. I told you. His first strikeout here in this game. Oh, circle change. I forget that he throws that pitch too. You think he's all velocity, but he's got other stuff. Slider. Fastball. Two-seamer. 12-6. And a circle change, man. It seems like you can throw it all at this point. Anderson Theta, line drive in the right field. It's going to bounce fair. Murillo going to come up throwing into third, and they're going to have two runners on, but they do have two away. Charles Thoth, 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 whatever. He's going to come in <laughs> as a pinch runner. Ivan Herrera is on deck. Anthony Alford at the dish. He is ahead. Three and one. Reyes pitches it. Ball going to hit the third and throw it up first, and we are going to get out of danger here in the 10th inning jump to the bottom of the 12th Morillo is going to work the walk and you know when he gets on he is a very speedy guy there could be a hit and run Devers is on deck but he might not be needed if Marte can get a hit here 0 for 5 chopper to second tag runner going to second and a hustle throw to first and he's able to get both runners good defense by 
Bruno. Devers, due to the shift, is going to hit it into right field, but it will be retrieved and thrown into first to end the 12th inning. Joey Murray coming out of the bullpen, 2.16 ERA. We haven't seen him in a long time. Curveball hit the second base. And you know what? In relief duty, we're going to ask him to do whatever we need him to do. He can be a spot starter, but he can also be a pretty good long man. Ground ball is short, but Shaq coming up throwing on the run, and that'll be an out to Ted Ray playing first base. Anthony Alford getting another shot. Still tied at three. He's got two doubles to his name. One for three and two he swings and misses chasing a frisbee slider to end the 13th Vlad Guerrero he's already hit a home run in this series can he hit another and walk it off giving us a 3-0 lead in this series slider it's not gonna happen oh man Bo Bichette is gonna hit one to right field and oh my goodness are we really about to continue to drag this series out in extras Ted Ray here in the 13th is gonna get a base hit into right field and I mean that at least gives us something to work with if we're playing small ball Sam Hilliard ahead 2-0 honestly I know Norris is probably look is a little disappointed but he can get out of this now up three I'm sorry now behind 3-0 Hilliard if you're not expecting a fastball I don't know what you think Ooh. Yeah, that was a close call 3-1 whatever no biggie 3-1 pitch fouled off 92 miles an hour Hilliard seeing pitches upstairs 3-2 again another upstairs fastball he's gonna foul it off all right all right he looks like he's on it 3-2 oh this ball is in deep to right field and we're gonna walk it off yet again in this series we will win this game five to two three sorry i can't seem to get my damn scores right i'm so damn excited at this point we are literally a game away from being world champions and we've walked off another game as long as we don't blow it we shall see all right we are pretty much hell-bent on winning this via cardiac arrest anyways we've been in a situation before five years ago up to nothing get ready to go on the road Hopefully we don't squander this. Game three. We get smacked. <laughs> 15 to 4 is not a good look. Come on. Over my shoulder, game number four. Oh my god. Oh, we ooh. Ooh, we serve up a revenge. A cold, cold, cold dish of revenge. 19 to 2. That is a crazy score. That might be the most runs. It, matter of fact, I'm gonna call it. I ain't even gonna look it up on Google or nothing. That's probably the most runs in World Series history. Oh my goodness, wow, Mariano Murillo and Gabriel Moreno both combining for 10 RBIs, Magic attacked on three. The only guy that didn't drive in anybody was freaking Devers, but everybody got a hit, so great all around game. I'm gonna assume the pitching did their thing because I only gave up two runs, one in the second, one in the ninth, as Mora picked up the W. You know what, didn't really pitch that long. Why would you only pitch him four in a third innings? I'm going to assume because the rotation probably was screwed up. Nonetheless, we've got a chance to walk it off or really win this in game number five. Game five here in St. Louis. We are looking to take that St. Louis arch and bend it into our ring if we can win here in St. Louis. Zach Gallon is on the mound, the Cy Young Award winner. 2.86 ERA and he shows why his ERA was this low as he gets a swing and miss from a knuckle curve and oh damn bad throw bad throw by Herrera and his magic will be safe thanks to an error Flag Guerrero can drive him in if he can hit a long ball I mean he's had a great defensive season this year ground ball right up the middle Gallon goes to second back to first that is a 1-4-3 double play Marte stepping back into the batter's box full count. He has 10 RBIs despite his batting average not being that great. Swing and miss, circle change up. Gallon known for that circle change, that fastball, that curveball. He shows it there. Jose Barrios, Cy Young Award runner from last year. Sorry, two years ago. Manoa won it last season. 2.81 ERA, 1.69 whip. It's looking like the hits are starting to get to him here in the postseason. Man. Not this time, swing and miss from his first batter, but fortunately our catcher will throw him out. 
Next batter, Charles Toth, batting 400 this postseason. Swing and miss, circle change of his own. As honestly, this might be a pitching duel. We'll see. We'll see. Two of the best pitchers in the game. Again, he throws that slurve, but that circle change, that six inches of break is a lot more deceiving thanks to that spin rate. Believe me. He mixes in that fastball and that sinker. There's a reason why he's been damn good the entire time he's been here in Toronto. Fly ball to right field, and we won't have to worry about a run here in the first inning. First batter, Rafael Devers in the second. He will swing and miss at his slider. Bo Bichette is going to work the walk. Good job there. Working him out. Mario on deck. Castilla at the plate. 383 batting this entire postseason. The AL CS MVP, unfortunately, is going to strike out looking at a fastball. That is the fourth strikeout from Gallon. Fastball just right down the middle. A little low, but hey, you got to swing at that. Murillo, one, two. He swings and misses, and damn, Zach Gallon coming with the strikeout pitch. He has struck out five of the first six batters he has faced. Alonso. Ooh, slurve that just kind of the cherry on top of the zone, just scraping by a razor's edge. Ground ball of first, and uh-uh, that's a gold glover right there. You are going to ground out to your own defensive position, Jared Walsh. Jordan Walker, 216 average, and oh, again, that slurve can sometimes just slip out of his hand and cause problems. Anderson Theta at the dish, ground ball. No, yeah, ground ball up the middle into center field. That'll give them another base runner for Anthony Alford, 275, and he pretty much chases a slurve, and Hillier, why you ain't chased it? Okay, never mind. You can tell Marte can handle it for the final out. Gabriel Moreno. Oh my goodness, that is, what, six strikeouts so far? Remember what the World Series record is. It's 17 held by Bob Gibson, and he is quickly looking like he is about to obliterate that before we even get to about the sixth inning. Sam Hilliard suffers a similar fate. Circle change just tailing away away from his back. Seven strikeouts for Gallon. Take a look at the replay again. Again, this is this is a hell of a game he's pitching thus far. Hilliard cannot connect. He's more of a pole hitter. David Vasquez. Chopper into right field. Ooh, diving attempt by Magical. Can't get to it, and he'll be safe on the slow roller. And Bruno, full count offering. Uh-uh. Just going to have to stare at that fastball, and he doesn't agree, but you got to swing then if you think you don't agree. Swing and miss on the slurve. Toth going to sit himself down. Lewis, ooh, almost gets hit in the elbow, but he's able to avoid the injury and be safe at first. Runners at first and second. Pete Alonzo at the dish. You got to be careful where you throw things here. 2-2. Two, two. Oh, wow. Okay, maybe not. Um, <laughs> That ball might as well be on a string. What the hell? That slurve's got hella break. Marte swinging and missing. And again, this has become a pitching duel. Eight strikeouts for Gallon. Walsh, former MVP, going to lace this one into the gap despite the shift. It's going to carry him up against the Cardinals bullpen wall. It'll get back in in time. Walsh will be safe with a leadoff double. Jordan Walker. Slurve. Doesn't get it flush, but he will advance Walsh to third. Despite what you can consider a sacrifice of sorts. Theta. Ground ball is short. Not going home. And the Cardinals will score a run. Despite the ground out. Up 1-0. Perios gets the strikeout on the pretty much rising fastball from himself Anthony Alfred sat down Vasquez hits one over short but in front of center and that'll give C, uh, St. Louis another base runner I'm gonna call him Seattle that was weird slurve hit up the middle okay Barrios is starting to show his colors again his whip is a 1.6 coming into this hopefully he's not unraveling at this point Pete Alonzo is going to walk oh boy full count Come on, you need the out. 3-2, and you don't throw a strike? Come on, man. You can't walk or run. Oh, my God. You have to at least just throw him a semi-meatball, dude. Walker swings and misses. That'll be a strikeout. Apparently, Burrio shook off the manager. Manager wanted to take him out, but mm -mm, not going to be the case. Magical will be a strikeout victim here in the sixth gallon. Still on a historic pace. Especially considering his team is up to nothing. We call on Alfred Carmona 
and he'll strike out that batter with a fastball. Anthony Alford, he's going to lace this splitter into right field. It'll bounce and carry him up against the wall just short of foul territory. The throw back in, and he'll easily be in there with a stand-up double. Vasquez can drive him in 2-1, and it's going to be ripped to right field. It'll get down. Hilliard coming up, throwing the play at the plate. He is out. No. What? Bruno. Oh, man. Unfortunately for him, he's going to strike out on a changeup. I don't know what the hell he thought he was looking for. Charles Toth. Fly ball in the infield. No infield fly roll needed. Gold Glover will make the catch. You got to take a look at this again. And, oh, man. That is just so close. Marte going to get the best of his former Arizona Diamondbacks teammate on a base hit up the middle. Are we looking to start a rally? I hope so. Devers, 3-1. He's going to work the walk. Uh, uh Relax, relax, relax. He's safe regardless. And that is going to be the end of the line for Gallon. Finishes with nine strikeouts. And he's in line to get the win, but he both of those runners on base are of his responsibility, at least to his ERA. It is Norris's turn. And oh, pitch gets away from Herrera. Both runners are gonna advance. We are now 90 feet away from at least one run, and they call out a pass ball. That was a wild pitch in my eyes. Then again, I can't really tell the difference which is which. Bachet strikes out. Castilla. Chopper. The catcher's not going to field it. The pitcher will, and uh, he ain't going to be able to throw it in. The runner will be safe on what is what I would consider a very pitiful hit, but hey, it counts nonetheless. We can score another run. Murillo hits this one deep to right. Okay, maybe not that deep. Not a problem for Toth. And this ball is going to get hit the right field despite the shift. And Hilliard chasing it down. He had to run a long ways to make that play. Not, gonna, not just known for his power, but speaking of power, Jared Walsh. Oh, man, he's going to admire that one. This one is hit absolutely a mile away as the MVP of 2027 gives his team a 4-1 lead. Nick Magical going to get on base with a single here in the eighth, and Ted Ray is going to come in to pinch hit for Vlad Guerrero. You would never think you would hear that, but Guerrero doesn't hit lefties. Sinker kind of floated up there. It's going to get hit the right field. The leaping attempt, it's going to get out of here, and oh man, we are just down by a single run, and that is true. That is Ted Ray's first Major League home run. We called him up late in the year, and yeah, he just didn't hit one in the regular season. That is crazy. He becomes, hell, probably one of the very few rookies in Major League Baseball history to ever hit a home run in a World Series, let alone their first. Marte, chopper to third, and they're going to go to first, and unfortunately, we're not going to be able to tack on any more runs, but we are within striking distance, thanks to our first overall draft pick from 2022. Camilo Duvall going to come in and try to get the save. Uh, St. Louis did get a run in the I believe top of the eighth. Oh, Bichette absolutely demolishes a pitch deep to left field. And damn, I wish Devers had not struck out on such a stupid pitch. This game would have been tied. Bo Bichette, six home run. <sighs> As we admire Bo Bichette, who just got a contract extension not that long ago. So, you know, he's, he's really turned out to be worth every penny we, play, we paid him, especially considering we paid him before we really had to arbitration we bought out his arbitration he performed castilla ground ball to second base and unfortunately we are gonna have to go home no wait no that's not that, nope it's not done yet i'm bugging morillo 2-1 he's gonna hit this one in the right field and yeah i kind of jumped the gun oh well we are going to have to go home in order to win this championship it is now a 3-2 series Barrios, eight strikeouts, Gallon, nine. As St. Louis is going to look to tie the game up in the series up in game six. Speaking of which, we jumping right into it. I ain't waiting. Okay, as you can see, both games three and four were masterpieces. Pearson is going to be on the mound. The guy with the only perfect game in Toronto, Blue Jays history, Matt, Michael or Matt Lieber, too. I forget which one it is, is going to be on the mound for St. Louis. Pearson, nowhere near perfect. 10.45 ERA and an over two whip curveball hit the second base magical gonna throw him out to 
to start off the ball game, DJ Stewart comes up next. In this 2028 postseason, he is batting 333. But that is going to be lower just a bit thanks to the strikeout. High fastball. Remember, Pearson, he does have a bit of control issues, but his stuff is good. Like, his curveball's got hella break. His slider, as you see there, is even more break. You know, there's a reason why his potential was so high coming into this. Matthew Libertor, 3.72 ERA, 1.71 whip. And, uh, it's not good, but nonetheless, he has to work with what he works with. Mario batting 333 in this postseason is unfortunate to lower his batting average even lower as well. Marte gonna hit one to right center field and eh, he really got out in front of that fastball, hence why he couldn't get all of it. We move on, Mr. Devers. Oh, swinging Miss Jeez Louise, he almost got swung out of his damn shoes. Speaking of shoes, Vlad Guerrero tying his shoes. I hope he got a. I hope he got a, a cleat deal after winning both of those MVPs. He's unfortunately going to strike out, so we won't know until a later point in time. Bo Bichette also going to suffer a strikeout. If the Cardinals keep pitching like this, we are seriously going to be looking at a game seven, and I really don't want to pitch from Levator. Ah, that was that was very questionable in my eyes. Nonetheless, I'm not going to be the one to answer it. Ted Ray coming up. He hit a home run yesterday. Let's not get our let's not get too crazy. But uh, unfortunately, he's going to ground this one the second, second to first, and he'll end the second inning. He is playing first base today. Vlad Guerrero is the DH, which is kind of weird. Anderson Theta strike out on a high slider. So he kind of chases that one. Fourth strikeout for Pearson. Take a look at that one again, and yeah, that one just touching the top of the zone. Anthony Alfred. 3-2. Oh, he thought it was a ball. The umpire called it something else. We get that again, and come on, man. If it's close, you got to swing. Uh-uh, uh-uh, no, no, no. You get your behind back in the dugout. Herrera, oh, unfortunately, going to get hit in the elbow slash back of the triceps, and he is going to give a dirty stare to Pearson. It wasn't intentional. Come on. I hope not. Fly ball to left field, and that base runner will not matter as we move forward. Alejandro Castilla, full count. Stepping back into the box. Why did you step out that far? Damn, the umpire really generous to you today, ain't they? Four home runs, 13 RBIs, 373 average in the postseason. He has been one of the best postseason hitters, if not the best postseason hitter in Toronto Blue Jays history. And he is going to give us a early 1-0 lead. His first, his fifth home run here in the postseason. Remember, he is the ALCS MVP. We signed him off the street way way back in 2022 and as we take another look at that one Castillo boom pulls it because I mean let's be honest he is a pole hitter all right Nick Magical oh wait no Nick, Nick Magical is at the plate and you know what the the team has really embraced him I'm not gonna lie Moreno oh nope he fouled that one off I thought he actually hit that out hit it a little foul gotta straighten things out three two Bang! And he's able to straighten that one out. And he is going to demolish that one to left field this time. Back to back long balls for the Toronto Blue Jays. We jump to a 2 nothing lead. Remember, he was our first, well, he was our number one prospect back when we started this. And you know what? Listen, he might have been like maybe a one-dime all-star, but other than that, like he's really lived up to the billing. Like that's the reason why we were able to let Alejandro Kirk go in the previous offseason. Murillo, 2-2 two -two count, and he's going to hit this down the first base line. Walsh can't end up coming with it. And Murillo hustling the second, but the throw is offline. If it had been on the money, oh, he was out. Believe me. Believe me. Libertor kind of questioning his decisions at this point as it is a 3-2 count. Devers on deck, Marte at the plate. And this one is going to get hit the left field. Alfred going to make the catch. Maria will have to retreat. Devers laces this 12-6 curveball up the middle. And the runner, Maria, will come around to score. It is now 3-0 here in game number six. Guerrero, 2-2 offering, chopper to third. Over to second, and that'll be the end of the inning. DJ Stewart, curveball, 
did it hit him i don't even know i don't know if it hit him either way he's safe at first kyle lewis is going to walk as well oh boy i told you pearson has some control issues that time and as you can see pete alonzo working with 3-1 count oh come on um you gotta you gotta be kidding me this is some bull man fool the bases are loaded one two jerry walsh oh my goodness thank goodness i would have been i would have been livid if that wasn't a strike that is actually his sixth strikeout despite him walking like five batters thus far walker hits this one two center field mark tail make the catch only one runner will tag up i would have tagged up one. i would have had the runner a second tag up at least put a little more pressure on the defense but i'm not the cardinals the hater he is gonna swing and miss at i think that was a slider could have been a fastball it doesn't matter it's a strikeout pearson obviously happy to get out of the inning but he should be pissed at how it happened boba shit swing and miss got way out in front of a changeup. up Libertor, you know pitching pretty well man five strikeouts you can't complain castilla already hit one out and this one is gonna get a ride to right field chasing it down Todd, whoa watch out dude in the bullpen that is his second home run here in this game holy hell i gotta admit Castillo is pretty damn clutch. At least he has been most of the time, or at least in the postseason. That I've noticed. When it comes to the postseason, Castilla does not play around. And he shows it. Nick Magical up next. He's going to hit one to right field. This one should be in the gap for a double. And oh! Magical hit a home run? Oh, that's a problem. That is, listen, if Magical is hitting long balls, you know you're in trouble, Cardinals. Because he don't hit for power like that. You gave him a good pitch and he just contact smacked it out. We are up 5-1. to 3-2 offering to, I believe that is Moreno. You know, chop at the third over the first and they will get out of the inning. So we jump to the fifth. Ben Bruno hits one deep to right field. And it is going to stay in the park, unfortunately, for them. Castilla could have got to it, but all right, whatever, that's fine. Let Marte get it. He does have a stronger arm. And they'll have a two out double Ooh, high fastball it's close if it's close you got to swing it's three two come on that's little league t-ball stuff that's little league stuff really so we move forward can tell marte hits one high and deep to right he is going to admire the hell out of that one and i don't blame him because i don't even know where it went six to one toronto his third home run in the postseason yes go blue jays go we win this game this would be our first championship in 93 03 13 23 35 years holy hell i'm mad i can't math faster than that i really can math usually is my best subject and <laughs> the numbers will add up vlad guerrero hits one deep himself seven to one it's good to see vlad hit one just because he's been regressing man like we can't even sugarcoat it also you can't sugarcoat it because i'm diabetic and I, I probably won't eat the bullshit you're serving me but we gotta fix regression man we gotta fix regression and MLB be the show 23 like we can't have superstar players playing like superstars and they regress just because they've been playing i get him regressing against lefties but because he didn't he hasn't hit well against lefties but come on anyway Pearson walks yet another batter. It's like a seventh walk. Ground ball pass. Devers at third. Both runners will hold up at one base. The former MVP coming through for his team, but they're down by six, and we are going to change pitchers. Pearson, you pitched well despite some walks. It's all right. Adam Klopfenstein, another former member of the D backs Desert Venom series, is on this team or in this series. Fly ball to left field he will get the job done of course that one is unintentional the toronto blue jays traded for him i think like the 2022 off season or something like that so it's all good nonetheless we get out of the sixth or seventh inning ted ray stepping to the plate one one offering circle change hit the right field it bounces in it's going to carry him off the wall in foul territory he'll end up with another base hit here in the world series Castilla, two for two thus far. 3-1 pitching. Oh, my goodness. 
he has just hit himself into history. He is one of only a handful of players to hit three home runs in a single game. He won't get a fourth. Wow. Like a hell of a game for him thus far. We're up 11 nothing, and it, it, it's seeming like an inevitability, but you never know. Maybe the Cardinals have a comeback in their heart. No. Ooh, that one gets out. It is now 11 to 2. Pete Alonzo gets a base hit to help his team out. In fact, it would have been hit right at the second baseman if there were no shift, but hey, you get what you get. Walsh, ground ball pass, Ted Ray in the right field. And are we about to look at a rally there? Down by nine. Chopper to Ray. Ray to, to short, short, back to Ray. No, Klopfenstein actually covered it. And Xavier Taylor, fly ball into center field. And we are the finally world champions here in the year 2028. Oh my goodness. Oh. I don't know why it took so long, but hey, you know what? This one actually feels sweeter just because we didn't win it in year two, the first year we made it to the postseason. Like we had to really work. I had to really work to build the team and to have enough confidence in most of this team to build them into champions. Now, if you want to see us actually sim out maybe a little further, I'm gonna need you to sub and I'm gonna need y'all like this button. I'm gonna need y'all to comment. We are the world champions and Honestly, I believe in defending the world championship, but I'm gonna need at least I'm gonna say 10 likes Your 2028 world champion Toronto Blue Jays Understandably rightfully so Alejandro Castillo is the World Series MVP. I didn't think when I signed him 2022 right as we were starting the franchise i didn't expect him to be the reason we won the world series but every postseason we have been in he has been consistently great 